So I'm seeing a lot of people search for UPS in ticker. It actually has a really high score. So let's find out if this stock is a good buy. So jumping into ticker, I'm going right to the dashboard. And if you guys haven't used this part of the tool already, you can customize the dashboard to really anything you want. There's a bunch of modules or widgets you can select, such as I have top gainers, top losers, uh, top search stocks. This is all within the last 24 hours. Um, you can even add your favorite stocks. Uh, even your watch list. But what I did is I went to the top search stocks widget and I see here UPS is shown. Let's go ahead and click on that. And this is where things get interesting. So this stock is on sale. Of course, with that summary within ticker, you are either on sale, watch or overpriced. Getting to on sale is the most difficult. That's what we are looking for, those on sale businesses. In this case, we can see the score is 95 out of 100. On sale means the stock is either, it has a score of 50 or higher and a margin of safety of 50% or higher. In this case, UPS, they are that 95 out of 100 score and then the margin of safety is 90%. So really strong financials. This is a well-run company. Um, of course, we want to find out, is this a stock we should really invest in? In most cases, we see these numbers as like, yes, this is a great stock to invest in, but let's keep going. Um, jumping into the earnings calendar, this is what gives institutions confidence to keep investing more. You have your estimate and you have your reported. So if we scroll down, Let's take a look here. I'm going to change this from, uh, I can see 10. I'm going to change this to 20. We have future earnings dates in here. If you guys haven't used this tool, it's kind of cool. You can, you can see the future earnings dates and you can click a calendar and add it to your calendar. I do this all the time because I want to know like in the future, when is that earnings date? So I can expect news on whether they beat or miss their estimates. So looking at UPS, and for those of you on the podcast, don't worry, I'll be kind of speaking to what I'm seeing here. So they beat the estimate by 1.6% the last quarter. That's not a huge win. They did beat it, but it's not like by 5% or 7% or 10%. So they beat it by just a little bit. Prior to that, this is going back to April, they missed by 0.4%, so a small miss there. Even if you miss by a little bit, that does create a little issue for institutions. Uh, they lose confidence. They want to see these companies beating those estimates. Then prior to that, look at this, they only beat by 0.8%. Prior to that was 5.2, that's a little better. But really the last time they had a big win with the earnings report was back in January of 2022, where they beat the estimate by 15.8%. That's that's a wow factor right there. It's like when you see a number like that, institutions are like, okay, something's happening here with the profitability of the company, time to pile in. So because these earnings reports are kind of lackluster, you could say, I mean, they're beating estimates, but it's not by a huge factor. That is one reason why if you go to the ticker rating page here, we can take a look at the returns returns this year is negative 10%. Most companies, especially a lot of companies with a really high score and high margin of safety, they are up a lot more for the year. So negative 10%, that's not too good. Then if you go to the five year, you are relatively flat. I mean, 26% is all right, but this is over five years. That's nothing to write home about. So one factor here to pay attention to is the earnings reports again aren't a big surprise now two and three i haven't talked about and here they are so number two would be this is a shipping business in order to ship products around the world means you have to hire more people you have higher liabilities so you're not going to see high profitability like you would in let's say a tech company tech company you can be selling let's say software software as a service you could sell 10,000 you could sell 100,000 uh, licenses or memberships in 24 hours and you really don't have to increase your liabilities a whole lot so just to kind of think this through you have increasing revenue but in a business like UPS you also have increasing liabilities you have to hire more people to help move the products around the globe um, so that's point two higher liabilities number three would be there are a lot of competitors 
in this space. If you jump to, and I'm jumping into ticker again, going to that similar stocks tab, you can see who are the other companies here. You have FedEx, which looks like they've got a 56 out of 100, which is decent. Then you have XPO, which is, um, I see a 33 out of 100, not looking too good there. GXO is 39. Um, so these, these companies here all kind of do the same thing. There might be some cost differences between each, but how do you really separate yourself from the competition as UPS? What I'd like to do next is kind of walk through the 4M checklist. And, and as of September of 2023, we're gonna be walking through the old version, the new version, which will come out here in hopefully a month or two, hopefully uh, maybe October, November time period. It will be powered by OpenAI, which means it's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you and I. We won't have to go through so many steps. So let's go ahead and click on the 4M checklist and walk through this. So we can see here, we're looking at the, the margin of safety, the meaning, moat, and management. The meaning is the business, the moat is how does it stack up against the competition, and then you have the management, that's track record of the CEO. All right, going for a score between 80 and 100, let's see what we get. Jumping to the meaning, some of the questions here, are how confident are you this business will be around in 10 years? A scale from very low to very high, I'm going to say high. How well do you understand this business model? Um, somewhat, I'm not going to say very high. I'm gonna put, let's say high in this case. And then if you were to Google um, UPS, any negative news in the last 30 days, I did that before this call. I didn't find anything, so I'm gonna check that as no. Um, then I wanna find a few competitors here. So let me back these out. Definitely FedEx is top of the list. Uh, JB Hunt, we could keep that there. Expeditors, let's go uh, XPO. And then we'll put in GXO, let's see what we get. Okay. All right, we've got five competitors selected. Again, open AI with the new version. This step will be completed for us. I can't wait for that. This is gonna be huge, huge time saver. All right, we'll hit continue. The CEO, uh, Carol Tome, she's been there. I did a little homework before she's been there, about 20 years, uh, has a share price reached an all-time high. I'm going to say yes. Um, any negative news in the last 30 days on Carol? That's a no. Um, I did go over to Glassdoor. There's a few Glassdoor percentages here. So we have a Glassdoor rating of 3.5 out of five. We like to see 4.0 or higher. Um, so it's pretty close, but the issue here is the CEO approval is at 59%. Um, we like to see 80% or higher. Um, so not the highest Glassdoor rating, but let's click continue and see what we end up with. Okay, we end up with a 92 out of 100. So that gives us high confidence to buy this stock. Now I would agree with that, definitely high confidence to buy this stock, but I would set expectations with this stock. It's probably gonna be slow and steady wins the race. You could probably get very similar returns to investing in the S&P 500 or some large index fund because this is how UPS essentially operates. Again, that big deal with the business, this is not going to be a highly profitable business in order to move products around the globe. You need to hire a lot more people. Keep in mind as we went over with this company, we have three things to pay attention to. Number one, that EPS, every quarter, it's not beating expectations by a lot. Number two, high liabilities in a shipping business. And number three, high competition. There are a lot of shipping companies that can provide pretty close to the same service. So keep those details in mind if you invest in UPS. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more like it, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna find other stocks like UPS and test drive some of those open AI features that are coming soon, we invite you to join Ticker for free.